and welcome back to Let's Play E7. Uh, I misspoke a little bit when I was telling, talking about the preparations I'd be doing for this boss fight. Uh, it is actually level 28 that I wanted to get to, although based on my practice, practice run, uh, level 29 probably would not hurt. This boss is hard. Uh, what I'm going to go over the setup I've got here, uh, we got the blue jewel on Mishera. Her main job is to lay out as many tornadoes as possible. I've got the Power Wrist 2 on Adol. Any opportunity that presents itself for using his extra skill, which there will be a couple opportunities, uh, I definitely want to have him do it because he's got the strongest one. And Aisha, uh, she deals Pierce type damage, which does more damage to the boss. I got her uh, outfitted with the Gavel of Souls so that she uh, just has a little bit of boost to everything. And, of course, I've synthesized all of the best equipment uh, available for us at this point. I wish there was a tier higher for equipment. Uh, the only thing I didn't synthesize was bracelets, since I didn't feel like getting the Ashen Rocks for that, and it's a very negligible boost anyway. With that out of the way, hopefully I can get through this boss with minimal headaches. We do, of course, have new skills to learn, since we have new weapons, but I uh, would rather focus on defeating this boss before we get the opportunity to demo those, and we'll have the chance to anyway. Tornado itself is a new skill, so it's something to show off. We're going to be using it a lot in this boss. Dogie, did you let that one rip? Wait a minute. Hmm, impurities, huh? Of course, uh, while we're thinking about that, there is a big boss-type style arena that we're in. So, of course, we've got a boss, and we are in a wind area, so of course we got a gigantic bird to fight. Looks like a zombie bird, actually. I'm assuming he's the source of the rot. This is Kava Kelos, and this guy is ridiculous. First off, take a look at his HP at the start of this fight. 38,000, just shy of 40,000. This guy is twice as durable as the previous boss. Uh, he is starting off with his most annoying attack by far, where he creates this tornado. Uh, right now, you can dodge away from it. However, you want to practice uh, doing repeated flash guards on it, because uh, later in the fight, it's going to become faster, and uh, attempting to dodge it then is a lost cause. You just want to uh, flash guard it. We're going to do ouchies. Uh, he has a couple of attacks that can stone you. Uh, we're going to switch to Adol here and hopefully get a chance to flash guard so I can hit her with a uh, Lunar Blade. This might be a chance to do it. When she runs at you like this, she's going to stop, do a Beak Swipe. Uh, whoop! Yeah, it does two Beak Swipes. I wasn't sure if uh, she did one or two in the beginning of the fight. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be a he or a she. I, I think it's a she because uh, later in the fight, uh, she will lay eggs. Here, we'll hit her with Lunar Blade, do a pretty sizable chunk of damage there. For uh, Adol's uh, skill for that, since we share us, very difficult to do a lot of damage with it unless you use that point blank. We'll do half as much damage uh, as Adol's on average, so I don't really like that much. It's more of an AoE type uh, extra skill, and those aren't that great in this game, to be truthful. All right, we're actually doing pretty good. Uh, one thing that sets Cavakellos apart is that she goes into her Berserk phase very, very early. After just uh, 8,000 HP taken out, she will uh, become much more uh, aggressive. Uh, all of her attacks uh, that hit once will now hit twice. That tornado, uh, not only does it move faster, it now has greater suction. Trying to dodge it is almost impossible. Uh, here, uh, because Aisha is stoned, uh, Kava Kellos uh, does a thing where she jumps in the air and slams the ground. The shockwave does not damage you unless you're stoned. If any of your party members are stoned, uh, Kava Kellos will just spam that repeatedly until they manage to break free. Your party members take forever to get break free of uh, petrification. This does have its benefits, though. Uh, if you can get the timing down on it, and trust me, it's really weird, so that's easier said than done, the shockwave from her butt stomp uh, is very, very, uh, or not very easy to flash card, but it does create an op- oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, let's uh, just uh, do a quick heal up. Use up our Sally Mara extracts first, since those are the weakest by far. We've got three Nadley extracts and as many incenses as possible. One thing that's a very real concern with this boss fight is uh, Adol and Aisha running out of HP, and if that happens, they will uh, just not do anything, which uh, towards the back half of this fight is uh, very much a problem. Uh, you definitely want to save your incenses. Uh, Kavakelos has a pretty high amount of stun health, so it takes a while to get her to drop. 
Uh, that also means Dogi is not that great for this fight, because uh, because his modifier is multi strictly multiplicative, uh, he does not really increase the rate that at which you stun her. Uh, if you want to play a bit more risky, you can play Adol and do a lot of Earth Shakers. That does stun her relatively quickly. There you can see uh, Mishara's homing attack just not really working how you know. Let's uh, switch to AL, see if it can't break out of this. Okay. Yeah, even after uh, breaking out free of the stone, uh, Adol was still in a bit of stun from the shockwave. A bit weird like that. The reason I'm playing as him, of course, is as you can see, we've got another extra skill built up. Let's see if I can't... Yes! Okay, good, good, good. And then I want to switch to Mishara as soon as this is done. You can switch characters while uh, extra skills are uh, mid-animation, and that does create a sort of stunning effect on the boss, but uh, it also reduces the damage of the extra skill. Uh, we're panicked there, I want to use one of our Panaceas, uh, so I wouldn't really recommend it too much. I experimented with it a bit in one of my test playthroughs, and I found that it just wasn't really worth it. Uh, the biggest thing you could do with it is uh, use Mishara's extra skill, and then have Adol do Earth Shakers on the boss, and that could uh, do a lot of stun damage. Sweet, we got a level 4 Tornado here. But I'd, I don't really find the loss damage to be worth it, just to have a chance to hit her while she's stunned. Getting better at uh, getting the time out of it. it. It doesn't look like it. The timing on that is very weird. It is very easy to get hit by it. But as I've said, it doesn't do any damage if you're not stoned. Uh, it just puts you into a hit stun, and you just gotta start uh, mashing the buttons to get out of that. Can be dangerous, but it's not something to worry about too much. Here is where Cavakelos uh, gets one more trick up her sleeve, around uh, 15,000 HP. When she does that attack with the exploding feathers, she will drop eggs. Uh, we actually want to let at least one of these eggs hatch, and as you can see, she's doing a rush attack thing. Let's use our uh, Marula Incense just to get Adol and Aisha back in attacking. Uh, we do want to let those eggs hatch because uh, the enemies within them, you need to kill them to complete your beast area. If you do not... Uh, oh, I actually knocked her out of it. Uh, that's very rare for me. Uh, usually I don't have enough offense since I'm usually too busy throwing out tornadoes to be able to damage her quickly enough to break her out of that. Uh, but yes, if you do not kill these little chicks, uh, then you will not be able to complete the beast here. You'll have a permanent blank spot in there. Alright, let's see if we can it. Uh, the further away you are from the shockwave, the weirder the timing on it is. Like, the actual hitbox for it does not line up with the animation at all. And, uh, even more weirdly, sometimes you can flash guard it after you've already been hit by it. It's just a very bizarre attack overall. <laughs> And here we're kind of getting into uh, her petrification scream loop. Uh, once she's half dead, she'll start doing this petrification scream. Does not do any damage, but as you will see, uh, it petrifies your party guaranteed. Uh, you can flash guard it, but it's very tricky. Got more eggs down here. Uh, let's see if we can't get these taken out. Oh, dear. Yeah, sometimes uh, she will not allow you to take out her babies, so you gotta be careful of that. And unfortunately not, but thankfully the damage you do to the eggs uh, carries over to the chicks, so if you've damaged the eggs pretty heavily, the chicks will fall not long after. As you can see, Tornado does good damage there, suctions them into the center, does uh, just excellent damage to taking that very quickly. This is one of the few situations where I'd actually say, as long as you have Tornado at about level 3, Mishara is actually pretty good here. Uh, otherwise, I'm not really a huge fan of her. Just, uh, you probably noticed, uh, her actual homing shots have very finicky auto-aim, and they can do really low damage sometimes. Let's, uh, we're doing good here. Let's, uh, use that incense, switch to Adol, see if we can't do this. Uh, yeah, that attack hits, inflicts the panic, uh, she's using it twice now. Probably the toughest thing about Kavakelos is just how random she is. Uh, I I've had it where she uses, like, as soon as a tornado is done, she will just throw out another one and just keep doing that, and I have to constantly flash guard to avoid the damage, and it's just so obnoxious. <laughs> there we go, that's what I was trying to do. But yeah, you see right there, the timing for that shockwave is just so bizarre. Like, the animation does not line up with, like, the hitboxes for it at all, and... You gotta really practice it to get that one consistently. Uh, I better use an Adley Extract just for safety. I noticed that Mishara was completely dead. Yeah, that's the big thing about the uh, petrification scream loop. It will kill your party members. I'll put them at 1 HP. They won't be doing anything anymore. Alright, we should be able to take her out here. There we go. Oof. Actually, believe it or not, uh, compared to my 
test attempt at this. Uh, this is probably the fastest run I got here, but we've been fighting her for almost 10 minutes. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest criticisms of E7 is that the bosses are extremely durable, uh, particularly in the back half of the game, so it takes a while to whittle them down. The game's sequel, Memories of Celsida, uh, toned this down a bit. Uh, bosses don't take nearly as much punishment, but in as a big trade-off, they do a lot more damage to you in return. So it's uh, higher damage tolls flying around on both sides on Nightmare Mode. Hm. Miasma. We're learning a bunch of new things. I wonder... Hmm... That miasma is causing quite a bit of problems if it's uh, summoning this uh, zombie titano bird. I really hope that doesn't spread over the land. Fortunately, Mishera has the ability to purify it. Hmm. Yeah, where did the miasma even come from? Yeah, let's uh, commune with him, see what he's got for us. Granted, the dragons we've met so far were big on being pretty vague, so I'm not exactly sure how much we're going to get out of this guy. And of course, after you beat the boss, a convenient giant elevator platform comes for us. Very nice. Now, let's head on to the Wind Altar, get our very slow text, and get a new ability. This is... Uh, this is not the, uh, the ability we're about to get is not necessarily the most useful, uh, on the whole, but for just standard combat, especially against fighting random enemies, you are going to love having this ability. So let's, uh, commune with the Wind Dragon, see what he's got for us. Eh, I don't like that crest as much, as, or seal as much as the fire one. Sorry, I've played a decent amount of Fire Emblem, uh, Three Houses, so I tend to think of crests when I see seagulls these days. <laughs> Muanti, the Wind Dragon. I will say, I, I am honestly surprised I was able to defeat that boss without uh, having to restart at least once. Uh, I was having some serious trouble against him in my uh, practice runs, and on my previous playthrough on Nightmare Mode, he was a huge stumbling block. Hmm. Looks like the people of Altago are either having a crisis of faith or just simply finding faith to be outdated tradition. And once again, Adol touches the altar and it activates. What do you got for us, Muanti? Walking in the Valley of Shadow and Death? Hmm. What's this about ancient Altago? Well, that didn't really illuminate us, not any more than the previous dragons. Well, if you've been keeping count, we have simply one more brethren to visit. And uh, we've seen one dragon, or we've communed with one dragon of a lost tribe and the dragons of all the remaining tribes, so looks like we got another lost tribe dragon. But now, we've got the Wind Seal, and it gives us an excellent ability. First, it doubles the speed at which our charge attacks charge up, and doubles the amount of SP we get per, hit, per uh, charge attack hit. Very nice. This will allow us to lay out skills much more quickly. And it's this point that you can more reasonably level up uh, level or tier 3 skills. Uh, trying to level up tier 3 skills beforehand is horribly slow, even with a training ring, just because they cost so much SP. So being able to build that up faster will really help if you want to level some of those up. And we will be getting some that we want to level up. All right. Heh <laughs> Ma, you're making me blush. Yeah. Questions on top of questions. I wonder if the miasma has anything to do with this. All right, 
what do you got for us? All right. Michelle, of course, wants us to come back to her hut so we can have a nice chat over a cup of tea. Sounds a little bit more than just bad luck. Hmm. It's like the country itself is just coming apart at the seams. Hmm. Oh, to uh, tie in with the ancient Altago that the Wind Dragon mentioned. Hmm, so those are the tribes we know of, but here we're learning about the Sea Tribe of Edona and the Moon Tribe of Iska. Iska? Does that have anything to do with Iskin Fever? Haha. <laughs> hmm. You think that might tie into these anomalies? Man, it sounds really inconvenient having your prosperity tied to the whims of the gods. Oh, Dogi, <laughs> you know Adol can't avoid butting his nose into things. Makes sense to me. Next up is the sea. Hmm, what do you mean? Ah, okay, it's the people of Altago, and, huh. Interesting, so the lost tribe, uh, the Dona was under our nose the whole time. I mean, it's as good a lead as we got as any. Alright, works for me. We're on pretty good terms with the king, and uh, we've learned quite a bit, so I don't think we'll have much trouble getting the location of that altar out of him, should he know it. Yep. Yeah, somehow I feel like King Kimarl knows a little bit more than he lets on. <laughs> almost a fourth wall break there, almost. But yes, like uh, Elk and Mustafa before her, Mishira ducks out of our party at this point. But hey, I'm sure we'll see her again. Before we head out, a new quest opens up in Kylos after completing the Wind Precincts. Or maybe after Mishera joins you. Not that it really matters too much. It's most convenient to do it right now. Over here, we'll meet Wes Herbst. West Herbst. I, I don't know. But he has lost the deer earrings that he got as a present for his daughter. Hey! Somehow I don't feel like I'm being complimented here. Hmm. Well, we have no reason not to. 
So, this is a bit of a unique quest. Now that we've accepted it, there's going to be several points in the Kylo's Gorge that we can inspect and find a pure pair of earrings. There are four pair of earrings to collect overall, but only one of them is what Wes is looking for. And they're not always in obvious places, so of course we're just going to do this as quickly and efficiently as possible, try and avoid as many enemies. First off, we want to head towards that uh, wall mural, the sigil that we uh, passed by before. Uh, because for once, uh, there's actually something on it. We get the flashy earrings. This might be what he was looking for, but he said it's for his daughter, and based where well, you can safely assume that it was that little girl that was also in the house. I don't know if flashy is exactly what you get for a small girl, so we'll uh, keep searching for more earrings. Now, here's an easy one to miss. On the bridge, hug the right side of it. And stuck between the floorboards, you find dull earrings. Hmm. Very doubtful that uh, these are the ones we're looking for. Now, you may have noticed that the uh, earrings are classified as accessory type items, and yes, you can actually equip them. Uh, it does not it is not so important to know for the ones that we've collected right now. All right, coming into here, the next one is in a cave. Uh, I believe it is marked by a little bit of uh, foliage on the ground. Or is it... Oh, no, no, it's right here. It's marked by the light. Here, sparkling on the ground, the cute earrings. Now, this seems like an appropriate gift for a small girl. But, even though this is the right uh, gift to give, uh, and yes, these are the earrings we need to complete the quest, there is one more to find. Heading out into here... Now, let me see. Uh, no, it's a little bit further up. I think... Uh, no, no, we, we went we went too far, we went too far. Yeah, these are always uh, kind of tricky for me to find, because <laughs> they aren't strictly marked. Let's see here. Duh, 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 duh. There we go. Ow, get out of my way. Guys, let's take this thing out. Fortunately, we've gained tons of power at this point, so they go down a lot more quickly. Here is the earrings that we're looking for. Glistening in the sun, we get the peculiar earrings. Now, these are actually pretty unique and kind of interesting. Hmm, translucent metal, eh? Let's take a look at those various earrings. Uh, let's remove uh, Adol's power wrist so we don't have to do any mental math. Uh, the cute earrings increase your strength by 15 and your defense by 10. Basically a straight upgrade over the power wrist one, but yeah. Now the peculiar earrings increase those stats by 20 each, and this is actually not a terrible accessory. Uh, certainly uh, I could think of worse ones to use, so if you uh, like the idea of these kinds of boosts, then by all means. The flashy earrings uh, are much crappier, uh, they only give plus 8, dull earrings only give plus 5, strictly inferior to a power wrist one. Of course, we can't actually make use of the cute earrings, because those are the quest item that we need. So we'll turn that over to Wes. On top of uh, Wes's quest to complete, we of course finally have the final variety of water to turn into uh, John Cordova, so we will do that. And I never actually bothered to give this guy the other types of earrings, I've always just given him the correct one. So I don't know if he permanently keeps those if you give them to him, but just to uh, err on the side of caution, let's just give him the cute earrings. Oh, I, I, I uh, misinterpreted that. Those are the, he got those as a gift from his daughter instead. I thought he was getting her a birthday present. That's what happens when you only skim the text. And we get a Vitality Belt 2. Increases your HP by 300. Pretty sizable boost, but I'm not too big a fan of the HP boosts in this game, since you can only equip one accessory, and there are other things I'd like to have. Now, we've got to head to Altago City. Of course, our first order of business when we get here is to hand off the water to John Cordova. So, let's give it to him. Give the water. And hand over ten fragrant waters. <laughs> I mean, I, I was just uh, searching for anything and everything. So I don't know if this is a water of legend. Oh, that was some interesting water. Uh, 
All right, and you just have to travel into the Wind Precincts to get more. We get 1,000 gold for that. And for successfully completing the quest, we get a Hawkeye 2, a.k.a. 5,000 gold. Thanks, John. <laughs> All right. Now, let's take a look at our quest log here. And we've got the 12 quests that can only be completed in the first half of the game completed. Which is good, because we're about to reach the end of the first half of the game. The sea uh, altar is a point of no return. Once you head to the area to, that leads to it, you cannot return to Altago City, and any quest that was available in it or any of the villages becomes unavailable afterwards. So be absolutely certain that you are done with everything. Now, you may notice that we have 50,000 gold, so this is a perfect opportunity to buy the Alias Urn. We don't have uh, any more equipment upgrades that we want to uh, seek out while we're in Altago, honestly. Uh, we're going to be getting some better equipment in the upcoming area, so we will buy the Alias Urn and get a very useful effect. Pulls in dropped items and money from afar, so we don't have to run over things anymore so long as we have this item on. Now, we'll have a lengthy bit of cutscenes when we go to visit King Kimarl, so I actually want to go do something different real quick. Uh, there is one more quest that we can reasonably finish off before we move on with the game, so I'll meet you there. Now that we have made it to this point in the game, we can more than uh, certainly beat Balakilios. As you can see, uh, he has less HP than... Uh, like have, uh, the names of the bosses always go in one ear and out the other once I'm done fighting them. Uh, but this guy, uh, he doesn't have too much HP, uh, so we can defeat him more uh, certainly uh, now. Uh, he is still quite durable, but uh, you'll notice right away, uh, these roaming titanos, uh, they are actually really straightforward when it comes to fighting them. They are basically just really huge damage sponges. So, uh, yeah, he, the, all he does is this really weak stomping attack, so we can easily flash guard it, uh, easily dodge away from it if uh, that is more uh, what you want to do. Uh, and, uh, yeah, as you can see, sometimes I screw up, so maybe it's better to stick to dodging it, but, you know, uh, I'm not uh, in any dire straits here, so we can just uh, slowly, slowly chip him down. And, yeah, this is not exactly the most interesting thing in the world. Uh, takes a while. Uh, now, like I said, uh, this quest, uh, it is not something you need to specifically do right now. Uh, unlike the other quests, uh, the Roaming Titanos are still available in the second half of the game, and most of them can only be completed in the second half of the game. Valkilios is the only one who is weak enough that we can defeat him at this point, if we so desire. And I so desire. Less because it's an important thing to do, and more just so I can get it out of the way and not have to remember it later. Mm. Better be careful here. Of course, I did not restock on healing items, so I'm putting myself in a pretty precarious situation. Oh, you know, uh, I forgot. Uh, we've got new skills. Why don't we get those equipped? Uh, I'll replace uh, Rising Slash with Sword Dance. As you can see, uh, Adol used it a couple times uh, in the boss fight, but this one is just a decently powerful sword combo, uh, but it also generates a lot of XP, so that's something to keep in mind. Oh, screwed up my timing there. Uh, fortunately, I got a couple extracts, so I'm not too, too worried. Uh, let's see if I can get the camera so I can better see his stomps. Oh, man. Yeah, if Adol falls, or, you know what, this is a better chance to use this. Uh, once enemies are stunned, they actually do have to use defense. I, I will admit, uh, I am a little embarrassed by how poorly I'm doing this, but it's okay. Let's just uh, stick to dodging for now. Yeah, when he slams the ground with his tail like that, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, it only hits behind him. Uh, I think next time uh, we get an extra skill, if we get an extra skill, I'll uh, just switch to Dogi and have him use Power Strike instead. But yeah, slow fight, slow fight. So uh, I guess I'll talk about other things. Uh, finally got around to finishing uh, Shin Megami Tensei V. Uh, that was a game that I was very enthusiastic when I first came about. But of course, you know, I've got uh, so many other things. I am a s someone who just picks up tons of different things to do and always uh, gets something lost in the lurk. So I ended up completing that game much later than usual. Uh, I also got the uh, Destroy the Throne ending. Uh, I picked that one not knowing that I didn't unlock the secret better version of that ending. So uh, the game ended on kind of an underwhelming note, but hey, at least I beat it. I can get other endings much more easily on New Game Plus. I also picked up the DLC for that, so I can check out the content that's in there. Of course, uh, 
played uh, River City Girls Zero and uploaded a video for that yesterday. I'm so mad at the audio skipping in that. Uh, that is just something, you know, you can't really know about it until you get to uh, actually working with your capture card on a new computer. Uh, I genuinely did not know that the audio was going to have problems like that. I think it's just general compatibility issues because the capture device that I'm using for uh, my console games, uh, that is a uh, vanilla variety Elgato. Uh, Way back from, it was like 2014, 2015, it's definitely, uh, for, I've had it for at least seven years. Uh, it's no longer supported, so uh, I actually had to get uh, drivers off the internet since it didn't install them automatically. Uh, Elgato has just discontinued the uh, support for their standard capture card. So I'm guessing with my more modern hardware, that didn't work too well. Of course, I still have my laptop, which can record that just fine. And uh, I uh, have a bunch of cashback rewards, so uh, I actually invested in a newer HD... Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, man. Hold on a minute. All right, all right. It's, uh, let's, uh, let's pretend that that did not just happen. Oh my god. As I was saying, I got an HD 60S that should be here on Friday. Hopefully that's more compatible with my computer. If not, I should be able to troubleshoot it a lot more effectively than a capture card that has not been supported for seven years. Oh man, I am so mad at myself. I can't believe that happened. But quest 18 is completed, and these are all the quests we can reasonably complete in the first half of the game. So let's uh, grab this item here. We get a dragon orb. This is kind of a useless artifact. What this does is it allows you to rest in dungeons. So if you have this equipped, you can stand around and put away your weapons, and that will allow you to regain HP, much like if you did so in the field. It's not that terribly useful, but it is something there if you want to try and use it. But that is where we will leave this, uh, this for now. Uh, when we come back, we will be visiting King Kimarl to see what he knows about the Sea Altar. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching. Hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye.